Hello class, and today we will be going into some optional areas to finish them off, like the, uh, like the Under the Asylum, so we can finally kill the Stray Demon, and back down into Ash Lake, so we can kill the Hydra and show you guys the Covenant that's there. So, as you can see, I sped up very large portions of this video because we've already been to most of these places. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and run back up here, and up here. Cut the triggers immediately once you've already been there. Just went ahead and skip the cutscenes. Get easier. There's these guys. You judge your distances right, you should be able to get them pretty easily. So then you go down here. Make sure to kill all the hollows in this area. You uh, never really know. Um, you, you never really know which one might follow you down into the boss fight. That guy right there. I missed him. He'll follow us into the boss fight area. Louis is killed immediately from that attack. Let's see with our new heavy armor and shield. His attacks barely hit us. Or barely damage us. We're still gonna run out of Estus, but it's just a good idea. As you can see, we take out much larger portions of his health than we did in the previous boss fight. So we're definitely making more progress than we were. So it other than that, it's pretty much just the Asylum D Mason. He has a few more attack, like the Shockwave attack thing. Which is actually his most favorite attack. That was the one time his uh, pound attack landed on me. It actually does quite a bit of damage, so. So you should avoid that. So. Yeah, just back off of him when he slams his hammer. You'll the attack will miss you completely. And there you are. You're set. So what he drops is two a uh, humanity, a homeward born, and a titanite slab. This is useful to upgrade your lightning or normal weapons to their max upgrade count. Plus fifteen or plus five for lightning. Which basically so titanite slabs are very rare, so it's very lucky that we actually did find one. So yeah. So I spent a very large part of this video because the original video was like 52 minutes or something. So yeah. Um, I actually forgot something in the undead parish. So let's go ahead and do that. So run down this way. Talk to Andre. I turn the black ember. Apparently you find that strangely fascinating. So it's it's a little weird. But anyway, as you can see we can now we can now up do, uh, upgrade our weapons to a cult. As you can see, at least we can upgrade this to this. We only we only, we need one more titania one more large titania chart, which she doesn't sell. But we can buy that with the souls we got from the from the uh, stray demon. Basically it's just the uh, it's the key to the door in the uh, dark root garden. We'll get to that later. That'll be the last thing I do in this video. Actually, is open the door. So let's now let's go to the daughter of chaos and go ahead and do a really long, drawn-out run to the uh, Great Hollow and Ash Lake. So we actually have enough uh, shields and armor and stuff to actually be able to fight the Hydra head-on. So yeah. So, just wanted to show you guys. We're just going to equip the rusted iron ring over here because of Blight Town's swampiness. Don't forget to not kill those guys because the leeches they release are really annoying. I might actually end up showing you guys one. Anyway, down this way. Now apparently the NPC that gives that sells you really advanced pyromancies doesn't actually appear even after I got a pyromancy flame. So normally should be right there. Or maybe right here. But she's not there. So sadly enough we're gonna have to pass on that NPC for a while. 
So yeah, in case you're wondering why we didn't stop at the Blight Town bonfire, it's just because I'm feeling a little lazy today and want to skip right ahead to the Green Hollow bonfire. We can warp to most bonfires from any bonfire, but not every bonfire is a warp point. So keep that in mind. Well, there is at least one warp point in every area, I believe. It's still a good idea to. Uh, it, it's still it's still a good idea to stay at a warp point as your last rested bonfire. Uh, so that you can teleport there and then teleport back if you had to do something. I should have edited out a couple fail attempts there. So, I'm taking the long and slow route so that we get there much more less hazardous. So, as you can see down here. Here. Going to try to make the drop off to here, and we made it actually somehow. That was really super lucky. So it'll go onto the branch to the right there. You'll get stuck, and there's no way off, I think. So instead, go down here and see if you can bounce yourself off the branch. There's more of the uber-powered basilisks, but we can one-shot them now, so that's not, a, that's not a problem. So now we can head down the stairs, or the ladders, the ladder, and kill more basilisks. So I hope you like sped up videos, because this has a lot of them. Except some of the lesser boss fights, like Havel and Black Knight, I slowed those down just to show you guys how epic it was. But um, other than that, most of the running around is sped up, even in Dark Root Basin, because that area is pretty straightforward. Anyway, down this way. And down this way. Now we're in the Mushrooms area. So as you can see, I almost died there, which would have been really, which would have been really sad. As you can see the little mushrooms take two hits to kill now. See, there's two of the big mushrooms, as you can see, their hit was really powerful. If I had actually let it hit me, it would have taken a lot of damage, but probably a little less than it would have if I was, like... Probably a little less than it would have if I was wearing the heavy elite knight armor still. So anyway, we're going to go rest at the bonfire over here. Because we can warp to any bonfire from any bonfire. Well, no, not to any bonfire, but to most bonfires. So we're just going to go ahead and rest here and uh, store a few things. Um, actually no. So let's go fight the Hydra. I slowed down getting to the Hydra fight just to have you guys listen to the Ash Lake music because it's actually pretty good. There's the Hydra. He actually looks really, really, really threatening and that gets off, gets on my nerves a little bit. But other than that, no, he's, he's pretty much tame. So, the trick with this guy is to be a heavy armor person like ourselves, or at the very least a very ranged person. So you just sit in front of him, wait for his heads to smack the ground, and then chop one off. You can see? Head chop, chop a head off. You can see, it takes two hits to chop this guy's head off. Don't wait for them to attack you, which is pretty annoying. So when you chop a head off, nothing really happens. So, there, that's two heads. Sometimes they back off a bit into their water thing. Just just get towards them a little bit. They'll do their head smash. So as you can see, they mostly just hit your shield and you have it up. I'm actually going to use this opportunity to put the core in the ring. Which is very important because we want our stamina to recharge as quick as possible. Uh, that's a really straightforward fight. We just chop off all the heads, the Hydra will die. I actually missed them entirely in that run. So you can see the next stumps still have the head animations on them. So it's kind of weird that they, the next stumps look as if they're trying to attack. So it's pretty neat. So... Yeah, there's actually only three heads left, but I actually can't hit any of them because that guy's going underground and the other two are hitting way over there. Hmm. I think I entirely missed this 
hits that one. So we've got a strategy worked out for this one. I'll attack me and I'll run this way. Or I'll just hit that head. So apparently that was enough, even with two heads left. I did enough damage to kill the entire Hydra. So he drops two dragon scales and 10,000 souls. So I'm going to speed up the long sandy beaches here. There's the clamshell people, dudes. They're, uh... They're uh, actually really hard if you let them be. But, uh, once I figured out that I can stun them. Not repeatedly, but I can stun them. So these guys are frequent droppers of Twinkling the Titanite and Purging Stones. So they, so these guys almost always drop something. I think. Maybe it's just pure luck or something. But anyway, he dropped a Twinkling Titanite, and I believe this guy will too. So, the trick with these guys is to keep them stun locked ish. So they do a surprising amount of damage for how tame they seem, I guess. Little trick, just keep them stun locked. Or break their poise repeatedly, or something like that. There, that was enough to get rid of him. And he, and as you can see, their items are not always readily evident. You actually have to walk onto the body to see if there's anything there. So that can get a little annoying when you're grinding for purging stones between the like, day and night, but no, it works. Anyway, down this way is the way we'll be going to access the Covenant. There's actually one more clam person I didn't notice earlier. Just right down here, and there's this guy. So I'm going to use the same strategy I did with the other guy. Let's just break his poise repeatedly. It works like a charm, so you're fighting more than one, of course. We'll work on a strategy for that later, when we actually do fight more than one. Down in here, he drops a purging stone. So as I mentioned earlier, you can use that to cure curses. So down this way, it's a really long, ridiculously long walk actually, but uh, the reward is well worth it. Probably worth more than this actually. Well, maybe not the entire Great Hollow, but that has its own rewards. Anyway, down this way is the last everlasting dragon. These guys from the beginning that are that are completely immortal. So is this guy. So, this is actually a warp point. Something really cool about this guy is he is completely non-hostile. Even if you hack at him, he'll be non-hostile. So there's a neat little tidbit about this guy is he has a tail weapon. He also has infinite health, so you don't have to worry about killing him or making him angry. So he gave us the dragon greatsword. So we're going to... I'm going to show you guys that. See, he's completely non-hostile. I'm pretty sure there's no way of attacking. So you can see he does 390 damage. It doesn't scale at all, but it, but it has a required parameter of 50 strength, so we're not going to worry about that. Anyway, we're actually going to join his covenant because the Way of the White isn't all that good. So now we get the Dragon Headstone and the Dragon Eye. You can level up by offering Dragon Scales which basically just grants you access to the Dragon Torso Stone and increases the power of said Torso Stone and your Headstone. So the Dragon Eye Stone works like the Red Eye Soap Stone, except that it only goes to people who don't have any summons and who have the Dragon Scale. So the Dragon Headstone turns your head into that of a dragon. I'll show you guys how that works later. But you have to not be wearing any head armor for it to work. It's a really neat animation, I think. So anyway, now we are Dragonborn. Waha. Anyway, we can breathe fire. Uh, Yoltor Shul, I believe that is. Anyway, I'm going to stop making obscure Skyrim references, even though I'm sure you've all played Skyrim. You can see it drains your stamina. It doesn't do all that much damage, but I'm sure once we rank up, it'll be ridiculously overpowered. So anyway, all we need is some ranking up. I think this is actually the covenant we'll be in for most of the game, even though I will show you all the other covenants if possible. So that's 
all for this part of the video. Now we're going to head down into the Dark Root Basin. Boop. Okay. Let's get going. So we head to the Undead Parish, which is where the Dark Root Garden is off of. Now we head down to the Blacksmith. And down past this area. And yeah. So now we have a dragon head attack, so it's really awesome. There's actually used to be a glitch with this with the dragon headstone where you could use its effects to replicate to basically infinitely use the effects of any other item in the game. You can see the dragon headstone is a one-hit kill of those guys, so that's pretty nice. the dark red garden you just make a right right here and up this way so the so the, there used to be a glitch where you could like get infinite souls with the dragon headstone so that's pretty nice but I don't think it works anymore this is a crystal lizard I failed to get this one because it disappears before I get there but I will get this guy in the next video in the next, in, in, in a little bit in the next bit of the video. Anyway, let's head down this way since I'm a walkthrough by showing you guys all the items, if at all possible. So the starting sets for all classes are heading around the armor. This is the hunter's starting set, although with probably different bows and arrows. As you can see, this is a little better version of the short bow that weighs a little bit more, but since we don't actually have it, although we did get some feather arrows just there. I'm not really going to worry about it. Anyway, down this way, there is a Black Knight. So, he's the Halberd one. Some people might say that the Halberd is the most overpowered Black Knight weapon, but we didn't get it, so I can't really show you. But anyway, down this way is an item called the Grass Crest Shield. It is it has the same physical resistance as the Eagle Shield, but has way less stability, but it gives you an in an extra stamina uh, stamina regeneration boost. So it's good if you're two-handing a weapon, you can put it on your back and get increased stamina regeneration. So now we have the bonfire lit. And now we can run back this way. So there's actually another weaker Hydra in Dark Root Basin. Basin but that's really all the hydras there is. He's actually confined to his little pond zone, although when you're approaching him he does constantly fire the things at you. You can see we have constantly fire his water projectiles at you. You can see we have six dragon scales, that's worth actually less than one rank, unfortunately. So we're going to need to get a few more dragon scales. These guys rarely take effect from this. These are full stamina bar. You can see these guys are affected by the Hydra's water projectiles. So that's a nice little touch. These guys have a... Uh, these guys are the tank enemies found in a uh, Seath's place. But we can one-hit the guys in Darkrid Basin. So that's pretty nice. So... Uh, we're safe from attacks for a bit. We're going to put back on the Rusted Iron Ring because the Hydra boss fight here takes place entirely in waist deep water, I believe. So we're going to need to be able to speed up a bit if we want to be able to catch all the heads. As you can see, it's mostly physical damage, surprisingly, from the water projectiles. Well, I'm not quite sure what else they would be. I expect that to be something different, but, well, that's just me. Maybe it's the last update or something. You can see if they get past your shield, they can do some pretty heavy damage and stun you pretty effectively. So that one missed us entirely. You can see he's confined to his little pool. So I run down this way into the water. So as you can see, there's a big drop-off right about there. So we need to stay on the other side of that drop off. As you can see, one hit takes off one of these guys' heads, and they have a predetermined attack path. Yeah. So it's gonna get pretty annoying once we find out that one of the heads is actually like just it's 
we'll, we'll show you guys that later. You see a running attack is enough to take one head off. So, normally I had a quota of chop one head off every time. There's actually a few funny screenshots of this guy not dying after all his heads are chopped off. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's more just a glitch. See, here's this guy, and the last head has been bashing himself repeatedly far to our left side. You can see, he attacks way over there. Very careful to drop off. And where are you going, little head person? Yeesh. I, I can't even get that far. Oh, hey, he's over here now. Finally sunk in that he's the last head left, so we should actually attack this little fish. Now that's done. Hydra's dead. And we get a dragon steel and the Dusk Crown Ring. So it's a pretty nice ring. It grants increased castings to your sorceries, but it halves your HP. So that can get annoying. But it's but it's really good if you don't want to be stuck with only four soul spears or something. So there's the knight starting set. It's not all that interesting, but it's there. So down this way. I'm not quite sure what the conditions are for this, but there should be a golden crystal golem down here, which isn't. Surprisingly enough. I should probably look that up a little more, but maybe you have to have like placed the Lord Vessel or something. Which we haven't. So anyway. No, he's not. He's not there. But this, that, uh, that little cavern there is actually the passage to the DLC area. That's pretty nice. So to our right is a ladder. If you can barely glimpse it, it uh, leads up to an area that you could get to that bypasses the Crest of Artorias door if you don't want to spend twenty thousand souls. But as you can see, we already have twenty thousand, and it's really nothing this high level up. It's barely enough to level up. <laughs> so anyway. Up this way is we're going to switch to the Chlorinthy Ring because this boss fight is pretty tough. This is Havel the Rock. It's a cheap way of beating him, as you can attack him through the door, like so. But we're not a cheap person, so we're going to go ahead and open the door. So there. So expect him to do that kind of stuff. But anyway. He is uh, he's an enemy we've tried to fight earlier and has one hated us. But we have a much better shield now and a much better armor as well. And a much better weapon too. So Most of his attacks are pretty much ineffectual. And uh, he looks really awesome, that's for sure. Yep, he got a backstab on him. That's pretty much the entirety of the Havel fight. This is meant for earlier, as you can see, only gives 3,000 souls. And he gives us Havel's Ring, which is a really nice ring in my opinion. It boosts your equip load. So, with it equipped on, we can mid-roll in this armor set and weapons. Which is really, really, really awesome. And it greatly speeds up our maneuvering cap capabilities. And uh, the speed of these sped up sections where we're actually just going to previous areas we visited already. So up this way. And I forgot about an area. The Valley of the Drakes can be accessed through the tunnel that the bonfire was in down here. So we've already been to the Valley of the Drakes to grab the stuff under the Undead Dragon and take the shortcut to Blight Town. So, not enough to level up, so we're going to equip, uh, repair our equipment a bit nothing to upgrade. And so, let's go ahead and put some stuff away. We're going to have two night sets. I'm going to leave the painting guardian set. I should know. Now that we can mid-roll in this set, we could probably fast roll in the full time black set. I'm going to store a few weapons. basically everything that's not part of one of our sets. I forgot to tell you, but the blood shield basically just has some vice resistances, I guess. It's not really all that interesting. Now that's done, 
down this way. Just pull the lever. So these guys, so the guys down in this area are called drakes, as you can guess by the name. They're mini versions of dragons that shoot lightning for some reason, even though it's their one weakness. So yeah, neat little thing I just wanted to show you guys. If you use the binoculars with the dragon hat on, you put it up to your neck. See? It's really funny. Same with potions, you choke them down your neck. So they could have worked on that a bit, but I don't think it really matters. The dragon head just looks awesome enough. Anyway, I sped up every fight with the drake. They're super annoying. Let's see if we can break their poise with one good heavy attack. See, their main attack is to shoot lightning. They can fly with those wings, wings of theirs, as you can see, they try to lift off there. But, and, and another interesting thing is they can be lured off of cliffs. I never actually got that done, but they won't be able to fly back up because their flight is limited. They're smart enough to go climb and fall back onto the bridge. So they have posts and they want to return to them or something. So some of them actually start walking back a bit before I kill them. These guys infrequently drop dragon scales, so we could do some grinding here to get some dragon scales if we wanted to. So here I'll be very cautious and grab the grab the bandit starting set along with another copy of this fighter shield. He's trying to return to his post, but I'm just badgering him about it. So yeah, these, these fights are pretty long and drawn out because of our health. But um yeah, I got it. Anyway, there's two more left. There's actually three drakes down here. As you can see, fighting these guys just becomes tedious. You see, he's trying to walk back to his post. guys love returning to their post for some reason. Oh, that's that guy. Yeah, it's just uh, one or two left. So you might recall the undead dragon we fought the Fate World, and the one we encountered here when we got the uh, Dragon Crest Shield. So we're actually going to fight that guy and to kill him this time. Although we do get Toxic and almost die. We do figure out a pattern. So that's enough for that guy. There's one ring up here that could up coupled with dragon form and a few other buffs and low health and power within and all this good stuff you can use to get the most at most bang for your buck, the most damage possible. Because the dragon torso stone has a quick duration damage boost effect associated with it, which is really awesome. The red tear stone ring. It increases your attack when your H when your HP is low. So yeah, when your HP is low, you do more damage. It's a little more uh, it's a little more onto it than the defense one. There's nothing down here. <coughs> and this door we will open later when we actually head into New Londo after we finish up the uh, the Valley of the Drakes and the depth and the dark wood basin here. So I sped up this bit because it's long needless running. And I'm, I was just really trying to shave down some time. So, this video would have been like 55 minutes. I managed to shave it down to 33 somehow. And I only died once or twice on the Great Hollow. So... Anyway, we're almost dead. We're running out of Estus. So we're gonna actually going to switch to the Dragon Headstone, our most, our other most useful item. This way is the Undead Dragon. He's already awake because we woke him up earlier. 
That item that we missed there is just the soul of a proud knight. It's about 5,000 souls. Would have been really useful early on, but we didn't grab it, so... He moves his hand a little bit when we, uh, whenever he attacks us. And we're already toxic. Hey, I attempted my dragon breath to just doesn't work very well. There's not enough damage. You'll see his... Uh, Poison breath doesn't actually damage us at all. It just, uh, just poisons us, which we've already been poisoned. So be very careful of his attacks. Now that, now that we can mid roll, we can actually dodge them should we want to. That was pretty quick and easy. He doesn't actually have any special loot, and he only drops 3,000 souls. But uh, we don't have any Estus left, so we're going to head and go Homeward Bone back, because we already know what that way is. Because we came that way when we got the Crest Shield and stuff. Now we're done with that. Let's, uh, let's head back up to the garden area of the basin. And I can show you guys the Artorius door. But uh, first, let's go ahead and store some things, I think. Or level up, actually. Uh, that's that. Actually, I forgot a bit. Let's repair with our remaining equip with our remaining souls. And now let's get going. So now that we're out this way, I'm going to head back up to the dark root garden area and head to the bonfire behind the illusory wall, which was the one we rested at when fighting the moonlight butterfly. Let's just up this way. This way, and this way. This crystal lizard, which I actually managed to grab this time. Two twinkling titania and two titania chunks. I'm pretty sure he always gives you twinkling, and the other kind is based on um, whatever you happen to have. It's is based off of this random generator, but I'm sure he's always drops twinkling. It's just fun to burn those guys to bits with their flame breath. So you feel like I'm playing Skyrim. <laughs> but no, Dark Souls is way better. Anyway. anyway. Kill that guy. Kill that guy. Uh, up and off this way. You remember that door over there I might have showed you guys earlier? Or I might have not. There's a soul of the proud knight there. It's really not that all that much, though. I probably should have reinforced my Zwayhander with those chunks we got earlier, but I don't know. Anyway, now we can actually open this door with the Crest of Artorius. And I'll show you guys this video in the next... and show you guys this spot in the next video. Class is dismissed.